So you planned your surgery, you placed your implant, and everything went absolutely well. It's now been three months or maybe six months later, and you need to know, is that implant stable? How do you find out? So you may have answered my earlier question by saying, of course, insertion talk. Insertion talk is the talk which you get from your physio dispenser. It gives you a reading as you're placing that implant. You set it to about 35 newton centimeters. You place your implant and at some point it beeps. And now you know that your implant has reached 35 newton centimeters of torque, which is usually correlating well with the primary or the mechanical stability of that implant. However, when this patient comes back three to six months later, for receiving that definitive prosthesis. At that point, you really can't measure the, you can't really use the torque at the time of placement to give you an indication of the stability as it is now. Because the only way to get torque involved into this is to do something called reverse torque, which of course, as the name sounds, is probably bad for the implant because you may end up damaging the implant. And if the implant is actually not osseointegrated well, you're going to end up pulling out the implant. So reverse torque is a destructive method of doing these things. And what are the other sort of not so destructive ways of doing this? There are, you can observe the implant of course, you can test it with an instrument and see if there's movement, if there's pain, but this doesn't give you an objective value. One of the things in the literature what they talk about is percussion, where you tap the implant, a failed implant will give you a slightly different sound than an implant which is successfully integrated. Another way is a device called a perio test. It's not very popular. You can go into the literature and see why it's not so popular for testing implants. But nowadays what is most popular is using something called resonance frequency analysis. So how exactly does one test for the resonance frequency of an implant and how stable it is? Well, you would use something like this device. And if you come a little closer, I'm going to show you how exactly this works. So there is this little peg which is provided for this particular implant and you would buy that from the manufacturer and you connect this little screwdriver head to that peg and then you tighten it into the implant and make sure it's nice and hand tight. So you can see now that this peg sits on the implant and you would be doing this in the patient's mouth of course just for demonstration purposes I'm showing it to you on this uh, stone cast. And this is the device. This one is made by Penguin. You can also purchase something similar from a company called Austil. They kind of work on the same principle. And now when you turn it on and you hold it close to this peg, it gives you a number. In this case, the red line indicates the bottom, so you read it, and that was 86. Let's test again in a different angle and we get 85. So it's very close to that original number, so around 85, 86. So this is a very high stability for this implant. So what does that number mean? That number is called the ISQ or the implant stability quotient. And what this device did was it used pulses to this metal rod which we have put on the implant and it converts the response it gets from those pulses into what is known as the implant stability quotient or ISQ. Now here's the thing, if that ISQ is above 70, we know that we have a very, very stable implant and you're even okay to load that implant with a single crown without an issue, you don't need to splint. If it's between 60 and 70, your ISQ value, then you should consider splinting to other implants, of course, not to teeth, splint to other implants to get more stability. If it's below 60, then it's indicative that this implant may be failing, you may want to consider cleaning up any peri implantitis if it's there, do some additional bone grafting, a worst case scenario, take that implant out and start again. Do I use the ISQ device every single time during the second stage of a patient? I would say not really, because I, there are certain situations where I know that the implant is going to be extremely stable. For example, if the implant was placed in posterior mandible in native bone, I know it's going to be absolutely stable and the only time I would pick up this device to test is if the patient had a complaint saying I feel some discomfort, then I would want to test the implant. But if I place my implant in a grafted site, then I would routinely be checking with the ISQ to make sure that it has developed enough stability over that healing period. 
Another very useful place for you to use the RS cube is when you're doing immediate loading because you will place your implant and you can immediately test your implant to see if it has that good primary stability. So if you're getting a number above 70 or at least 60 to 70, if you're going to split, then that is something which it gives you a objective value which you can use to make that decision if you are going to immediately load that implant or not. For me personally, I would like it to be above 70, whether I'm splinting or not in an immediately loaded situation. So that is some of the sort of practical uses of the RS cube. It's also great for universities if you're doing research projects to test implant stability. If you have any questions on the RS cube, there's always a comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. If you'd like to see more of the Dental Review Guide, this is Dr. Varun Acharya signing off with a smile.